Hi everyone, my name is Sai Venom and I'm with the IBM Cloud team. Today, let's talk about Cloud Foundry, an open source platform as a service. Now, Cloud Foundry is a platform in the truest sense of the word in that it enables you to focus on cloud native application development and really puts a focus on developer experience. And that's every step of the way from developing the app, testing it, and moving it all the way into production and automating all of those flows uh, to make it really easy for a developer to get started. Now, there's a lot of technologies out there for doing cloud native transformation, modernization, but let's see where Cloud Foundry fits in with some of those other capabilities. We've got a few things sketched out here, but we'll get started from the bottom uh, with bare bones physical infrastructure. Now, I'd say that most companies that are using physical right now um, are, are really just kind of getting started or maybe have legacy applications, so they're, they're looking to move into the cloud. Next up, we've got VMs. Now, VMs continue to be very popular. They're a great way to package up applications, but with the growth of container technology, and companies are starting to see the advantage and, and a more agile workflow by taking advantage of containers and something like Kubernetes to manage and orchestrate them. Now, building on top of that, here's where Cloud Foundry comes in. So Cloud Foundry, as I mentioned, has a very developer-focused approach. So from every step of the way, they focus on the developer experience. And I think one of the biggest um, detractors or most difficult things for a company to get started with Cloud Native is changing the culture within their company from the inside out, from the developer level up. And with Cloud Foundry, your developers can truly focus on what matters, development, and they can just assume that the infrastructure works. As important as it is, at the end of the day, developers don't want to focus on infrastructure. They just want to expect that things are running smoothly. And that same kind of ideology applies to the top of the stack here with serverless technology, where developers focus on writing just functions, um, even less than just applications. Now, as we go down in the stack, we have control. So you get more control when you're working with VMs or Kubernetes on exactly how your app is deployed. But what if your developers simply don't care? What if they have applications that they want to run and don't care how the infrastructure uh, looks and they don't care how it's deployed, they just want a running application? Well, that's where you get the advantages of taking advantage of something like Cloud Foundry and serverless. You get ease of use as well as speed. Now, let's actually take this, now that we have the understanding of where Cloud Foundry fits in, and say we have a legacy application. Let's build that out um, and, and see how it fits in to a broader cloud stack. So we'll say over here that we have a front-end application, and that in turn works with a back-end. Let's say it's a legacy application with you know, um, a lot of restrictions on security, networking, and how it runs, and that kind of thing and that's kind of responsible for communicating with an old school database. Now, we want to take this application, and let's say we want to make it cloud native, take advantage of a cloud-based platform. So the first thing our developers will do, without understanding anything about the infrastructure, they'll start with, let's say, the front end and modernizing it. Let's say they want to use something like React, and take advantage of Node.js to create an all new application, taking advantage of that front end piece, and we're going to move that into the cloud. So taking advantage of simply the, the dev tools that are available through Node.js and React and those capabilities, they create a front-end application, say that's version 2. Now, so far along that path, the developers had no reason to have to understand the underlying infrastructure. They created that application, and next, let's say they've used a CLI tool. So this is where Cloud Foundry comes in. They use a CF tool to deploy that application into the cloud. Now, this is where the, uh, the first core tenant of Cloud Foundry comes in, um, and it's the fact that it's a polyglot environment. This means you can take applications written in a number of different languages running on any platform, and CF has something called build packs that will take them and automate all of the kind of building and deploying processes. So using CF, in any kind of language, any application, they can now deploy this into the cloud. So let's say that over here, this is the cloud side. 
They've taken CF, and now they have an application running for that front end app. Let's take it a step back and build out that infrastructure from the ground up to see exactly what happened to take that application and to get it running. So at the bottom here, we have the cloud infrastructure. Building on top of that, we have the Cloud Foundry technology that actually is able to take this app and run it as a container in one of these, say, their VMs. So here we have Diego, the Cloud Foundry tech, as well as Garden, which is remarkably similar to something like Docker or container runtimes. It's a container technology that Cloud Foundry used said, long before Docker was popular, back in 2011. So using these technologies, Cloud Foundry takes this app and runs it and schedules it within a VM. So here we have our, let's call it the CFAR, Cloud Foundry Application Runtime Environment that Diego and Garden is kind of responsible for scheduling and managing. So we've managed to figure out half of the puzzle here. Let's take it a step further. That backend app with those networking and security considerations, let's say that we care about how it's deployed. We don't want it to be automatic. We do care about the networking and storage considerations. We want to run it in a containerized way. We don't want to go in there and change any code. So we want to use something like Kubernetes. So let's say we take this backend application and containerize it. So now it's running as a container, maybe in a container image. So we want to deploy this application to Kubernetes, right? So we'll use a CF tool, or rather a CLI tool, and this time it's going to be kubectl, and we want to deploy this into the same cloud. Now you might think we're out of luck because we're taking advantage of CF and Diego and Garden, but actually there's a new project the Cloud Foundry released called Project Irene that enables you to swap out that underlying infrastructure, the Diego and Garden portion, and instead take advantage of Kubernetes. That means that we can continue to use those tools like kubectl and CF together in the same environment. Your operations teams would manage this side of the puzzle to make sure everything works seamlessly, but your dev team has no impact for their CF apps because they don't really need to care about what's powering it. And for uh, the apps that need to be run in Kubernetes, they can continue to use that same architecture. So using kubectl here, we can take that backend application and run it as a container within the same environment. And so essentially what we end up with here is the ability to do not only CF application runtime kind of based environment, but also Kubernetes together. And that actually brings me to my second point here is the fact that Cloud Foundry is interoperable. Now, this is very important because essentially uh, the fact that it's interoperable means although the newest fad and technologies are changing over the years, growth of things like Docker and Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry keeps the same familiar developer experience for their users. But at the same time, due to their open nature and open source and the fact that they're keeping up with the latest technologies, they have support for Kubernetes underneath the covers. And so this is very core for enabling our users to kind of avoid vendor lock-in, to take advantage of the latest and greatest technologies. And that kind of brings me to my last point, is that Cloud Foundry is open. It's open source and has an open governance model. It's actually uh, the CF uh, Foundation. IBM is a core part of it, and we do make con contributions to CF, and it's a core part of our cloud strategy as well. So, we have kind of a lot of contributions that we make to help make this run smoothly in our cloud as well. I'd say that's a core part of the open philosophy that powers Cloud Foundry. It's the fact that anyone can make contributions um, and features. It's completely open source. And the second thing I want to mention on that front is the fact that there's an open service broker API, meaning third-party services from any kind of uh, contributor can be uh, listed in, in something called a marketplace allowing Cloud Foundry users to very easily integrate with those third-party services, taking advantage of an open service broker API. So let's say these three core tenants and kind of what we talked about today, Cloud Foundry is truly kind of one of those really powerful platforms enabling you to focus on cloud-native 
application development and allows you to avoid things like vendor lock-in and stay up to date with the latest technologies with things like Project Irene allowing you to base all of these familiar applications on Kubernetes technology. Thanks for joining me for this quick overview of Cloud Foundry. As always, you can get started with a free trial on IBM Cloud, and you can find a link for that below. If you like this video or you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to drop a like and subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you.